What's going on everyone, my name is Code Mort, and welcome back to the New Beginner Java Game Program Tutorial Series Episode 17. Now today's episode is going to be really short and I'm sorry about that, but today we are going to be starting the process of creating worlds or levels or maps, whatever you want to call it, I'm going to be calling them worlds. So we already have tiles, but we need some way to display all of them into the screen to create terrain, to create an environment where the player can walk through. So since we're making a tile-based game, all we're going to do is we are going to take a bunch of those tiles and basically place them next to each other in a grid-like form of any size that we want, and we can use many different types of tiles, and that is going to be our world that the player can navigate through. So for instance, every single one of these boxes would be a tile. So let's get on to creating worlds. So first things first, we're going to need a new class to hold all the stuff that has to do with the world. So right click on our main package, new class, and I'm going to name this class world, and I'm going to put it in the dot worlds package of our game. Now for right now, our world class is going to have to have three main things. It's going to need, obviously, a width and a height, so I'm going to create two private integers, uh, width and height. So the width and height in terms of tiles of our world so for instance, a 5x5 five five map a width of 5 and a height of 5 will be 5 tiles across by 5 tiles high. That, that would be the size of the map. And we're also going to need one more very important thing. Some way to store all of the tiles in every single position. So we are going to create a private integer multi-dimensional array, and I'm making it an integer array because, remember, if you look in our tile class here, every tile has an integer ID. So that's how we're going to store the data for our tiles, by using IDs, not actually actual tile objects. So this integer multidimensional array is going to hold a bunch of IDs saying what tiles should be displayed in what position on the map. And it's multidimensional, meaning it has two indices, because we have certain rows of tiles, which I'll be referring to as x, this first index here, and we have columns, or the height of our map, which I'll be calling y. So we can actually index this array by x and y coordinates. I'm assuming that you all know how multidimensional arrays work, and I'm going to name this array tiles, so all the tile data for our world. Now let's go ahead and create the world constructor, and before I do that, let's talk about the two ways that we can create worlds. We can create randomly generated worlds, and we can also load in worlds from a file, that way it'll be the same every time. Now we're going to learn about random world generation later on, but for right now we are going to learn how to load in a world from a file and display that world to the screen. So random terrain generation will come in the future, but for right now we're just going to learn how to load up a world from a file. So if we're going to be loading a world from a file, we're obviously going to need the path of that world file, so the location on our computer of the world file that we want to load. And instead of doing all of the loading in this public world uh, constructor, what we're going to do is we're going to create a private void method called load world, and that's also going to take in the path of our world, and this method is what's going to be responsible for loading in our world. So all we have to do in this constructor here is call the load world method and pass through the path parameter that we took in. So this load world method right here is going to essentially get the file off of our computer of whatever world that we want to load, and it's going to get all of the data from it and store it into this multi-dimensional tiles array here, that way we know what tiles are in which positions. Now in this tutorial we actually aren't going to be coding this load world method. We are going to code this load world method in the next t tutorial. And I'm doing that because I just want to get the basics of how this world class is going to work before we actually go on into all of this loading file stuff. So we are going to leave this load world method blank just for now. Now what else does our world class need? Well, it needs to be able to tick, so public void tick, a tick method. That way you can update the position of all the tiles and things like that. And it's also, of course, going to need a render method, taking in a graphics G object as always. That way we can render every tile to the screen, that way we can see the world. So let's go ahead here and learn how the tiles array is going to work. Now in order to explain this, we're going to have to set the tiles array in the width and height variables equal to something, and I'm going to do that in the load world method for right now. Now this code that we're going to write in the load world method right now is not permanent. We are just doing this for testing purposes. We're not even going to touch this string path yet. We're not actually loading anything from a file just yet. So in here, let's just set the width of our map equal to 5 and the height of our map equal to 5. So 5 by 5 tiles, so that's going to be the size of my world. And we're going to set the tiles array, the tiles array, here we go, okay, equal to a new integer or uh, multi-dimensional array with width as the size of the first dimension here and height as the size of the second dimension. So in other words, our x-coordinates here and our y-coordinates here in these indices. 
So this tiles array now has the capacity to store tile IDs for every single tile in a 5x5 five five size world. Now because we aren't loading anything in from a file just yet, let's set every single element in this tiles array equal to 0, because 0 is the ID of my grass tile. So if we go in here, we are going to learn how to do that. Now since the tiles array is a multi-dimensional array, we can't just index it by one index here. We need some x and some y to get data from it, or set data to it. So what we're going to do is we're going to create two for loops, for int x equals 0, x is less than the width of our map, we're going to do x plus plus, and then inside of this for loop we're going to say for int y equals 0, and y is less than, than the height of our map, we are going to increment y like so. So this is effectively going to loop through every single element in our tiles array and allow us to set it equal to something. So I'm going to say tiles at and then the x position of whatever for loop we're in and the y position of the current for loop. And we're just going to set that equal to some tile ID. This can be any tile ID that you'd like. I'm going to set mine equal to zero because like I just mentioned, ID zero is my ID for a grass tile here. So every single tile in my world should be grass. And again, this is all just temporary code, that way we just set up all the variables, alright? This is not final code at all. So let's head on into the render method here, and we are going to do almost the exact same thing like we did to set all these tiles equal to something. What we're going to do is we're going to loop through every single tile using two for loops. So I'm going to do for int y equals 0, and I'm starting with the y for loop because that's how I've always done it, and it can actually prevent a few problems down the road. So I always start with the y for loop first. We didn't have to do that down here because we really don't care about the order in which we're setting them in. So, for int y equals 0, and y is less than the height of our map, then we're going to increment y, and then inside of here we'll have the x for loop, x equals 0, x is less than the width of our map, and x plus plus. So this is just going to loop through every single tile again. Now here comes the problem. How exactly can we render a tile? I mean, all we have is a bunch of integers, how are we going to do that? Well, we are going to make a method right here, and it's going to be a public tile, so it's going to return a tile object, and it's going to be called getTile. And it's going to take in two parameters, an x location and a y location of that tile. So what we can do inside of these two for loops, we can call the getTile method using the current x and y that it's on right here. And what this getTile method is going to do is it's going to find the ID in this tiles array at x comma y, or rather index 1 being x, index 2 being y. And it is going to look up whatever integer ID that is, it's going to go over here to the tiles, it's going to find which tile has that ID, and it's going to return that tile. This is probably a lot simpler when we just do it. We're going to create a tile object called t, and we're going to access the tile class dot tiles, so the tiles array inside of the tiles class, and be sure to import tile. So we're setting tile t equal to the tiles array at some index, remember this tiles array right here that holds every single tile in our game. And since every single tile, whatever ID is, it is, it's in that position in the tiles array, what we're going to do is index it at whatever our class's tiles array is, at x and at y. So this looks confusing, I'm going to explain all that in one moment. Next we have to check, if the tile that we got is equal to null, then, well, we're going to break everything if it's equal to null. So what we have to do is we're just going to return a default tile of tile dot uh, I'll do dirt tile. So why are we doing this? Well, you'll see that if I look at my tile class, my tiles array has 256 tiles in it. However, I've only set the first three tiles, 0, 1, and 2. That means if I try accessing tile ID number 5, it's going to be equal to null, and this getTile method is going to return null, and then when we try to render it, it's going to break everything. So we're going to check if the tile we got is not actually inside of our game, if it's too high or low of an ID, then we're just going to return a default tile value of dirt tile, or whatever tile that you would like. However, if this doesn't happen, this if statement is not going to run, so we can just return our tile that we got at the top line right here. So let me explain this tiles array right here. What is this doing? Well, tile.tiles. This is just the array right here inside of our tiles class. Now every tile, so like grass ID with an ID of 0, 
Basically, the tiles array at index 0 is going to point to this grass tile. But the tiles array at index 2 is going to point to the rock tile because rock tile has an ID of 2. So we're taking that tiles array and we're indexing at whatever this class's tiles array. I should have named them something different, sorry about that. But whatever this tiles array is equal to at the index x and y, whatever the parameters are we passed it. So essentially the ID of that tile at that position. And then we check if it's null. If it is, we'll just return a default tile, else we'll return that tile. So that's the get tile method, really simple. Now let's render it. So what we have to do is inside of these two for loops in our render method, we're going to call the get tile method at the current x and y position, and we're going to do dot render. We're going to render it using g, and then we'll just use the x and y positions. So let's test out and see if this works. Head on into your game state here, and I'm going to create a private world world. This will just be a test world. And inside of our game state right here, we're going to set world equal to a new world. And because our world constructor takes in a string, you can just put an empty string here. And again, we aren't even using that variable just yet. We will in the next tutorial though. Go ahead and import your world class. And then before you tick the player, you want to tick the world. Okay, that way all of the world moving stuff happens first. And then before you render the player, you want to render the world using graphics object G. And you want to do this before, that way the player will be drawn on top of the world and not behind it. So let's try this out. Go ahead and run your game and you'll see that we get, well, it looks like one tile. It's a little bit weird. What, what went wrong here? Well, let's take a look. If we go into our world class, we have width and height, and we're indexing the tiles array in terms of tiles. So if we render this at x comma y, basically what we're doing is we're rendering tiles at very small amounts, locations 0 comma 0 through 5 comma 5. And 5 pixels is not very much. So we have to convert these coordinates from tiles into pixels. Now this is really simple. All we have to do is multiply the x coordinate by the tile dot tile width variable that we created in the tile class and do the same thing for y tile dot tile height and remember these are two final static variables we have in the tile class indicating the size of every single tile so we're just going to multiply those that way we get a larger amount of pixels and it'll space them out correctly go ahead and run your game and we get an actual world full of grass tiles. Look at that. Now I'm gonna go ahead down here and I'm gonna set every single uh, tile in my world equal to an ID of one. And now I should have a bunch of dirt tiles as you can see. So this is really exciting except not really because it's just a bunch of tiles of the same type. We don't even have a way to load in a world file. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna delete all this test code in my load world method, and we are actually going to learn how to load up a world in the next tutorial. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. Any questions, leave them down in the comments. Either I or someone helpful will help you out. Thanks for watching everyone, and I'll see you in the next episode.